There are a few things as cool and as rare as a Dan Huff signature model anything. Uh, he just goes about his business making the hits and uh, bringing awesome guitar parts to all kinds of uh, songs of every genre and style, shape, and size. If you don't know this, Dan Huff came to LA in the 80s and quickly became like the top, 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 top tier. Um, Session player, played on everything. Everything. Madonna, Whitesnake, Paula Abdul, Amy Grant, Shania Twain, Faith Hill. Like, there was nothing that he didn't play on. Like, that Chicago song where you're like, dang, that's a good solo. Uh, he probably played the solo on that. At least one of them that you thought that. Um, so yeah, he is remarkable. And then quickly became an incredible producer and um, has been doing that. I think in Nashville ever since. Ridiculous. But he just doesn't sign his name to stuff. Uh, you just don't see it. You know, most of the time you would have seen from other producers like the pedal, the string set, the signature amp, you know, everything in between. But no, um, really the only thing that I've seen is uh, the Tyler guitar. Because Dan's number one axe, um, I think at early 60s Strat, was essentially kind of gutted and reworked by uh, James Tyler into the like ultimate studio beast. In the late 80s, riding high on uh, these like rock sessions he was doing, because he was kind of like the go-to rock guy, um, Dan formed a band called Giant, which if you haven't heard Giant, go check out Giant. It is the best pop rock in the vein of sort of Toto and like radio hits from like Whitesnake kind of thing. But mwah, it's the most super group of super group stuff. Um, it's, it's hilarious. When you get a keyboard player who's so good that, uh, you know, he's jazz metazzy good. Like, he's amazing. Alan Pasqua. And he's hidden in the back. That's how good the band is that you have an elite level keyboard player and he's sort of hiding off in the corner. Um, hard to not to do when you got Dan Huff front and center, and he's an amazing singer too. Anyway, I'm gushing because I'm very passionate about my Dan Huff topics. <sighs> Back to the Tyler, let me take a breath. Okay, Back to this Tyler. So this Tyler is the um, Dan Huff signature. The Dan Huff signature. I'm sure he doesn't sign his checks with the same signature, so don't even think about it. This was one of the main guitars that if you saw giant in a video in the uh, 80s and early 90s. It may have been a yellow Tyler, and it may have looked exactly like this. I've got this on loan. Uh, my buddy Rich Rankin, uh, the b big cheese over there at Tyler. Uh, let me let me take it for a spin. Oh, it was so sad when I have to give it back. But I wanted to share this with you because uh, I found it to be super inspiring um, as an instrument. The pickup configuration on this one is a Tyler Shark. Dan used a JB. The Tyler Shark is quite similar, and I don't know if the change in sound is more based on uh, the guitar itself and how it routes. I would say it's a little warmer, perhaps a little thicker than a JB, not quite as much uh, that high-end chirpy sharp attack, um, but similar enough to where it's a good reference point. Uh, the single coils, single coils, are uh, Duncan hot stacks. So it's essentially three humbuckers across. But how does Dan get all the like clean? Well, that's the trick. 
with this switching system here. This is one of those things that outside of Tyler, it's really rare to find this. So what we've got here is your volume knob, your tone knob, and then this is a Demeter preamp. I think it's technically called a mid boost, but it's really like a preamp, an active preamp, look, battery slot. The preamp is out of the circuit unless you activate it by letting that button up. These three switches are series parallel for these bad boys here. We all know about coil tapping, splitting the humbucker here. That's a, the low button push. And if you wanna do the single coil here and get it really single coily, push that. Now you have all these wonderful combinations of series parallel, active, not active. So when you're putting down parts, it's just like, mm, too thick, I'm gonna switch that. For instance, neck pickup. Nice, pretty thick. These are actually bridge model pickups so that your output is gonna match with this blaster of a humbucker here. Uh, I love that. If this was the only way the pickup sounded, it might be a little thick. You know, uh, like Andy Timmons uses a bridge pickup uh, in his neck slot. It gets a big, fat, warm sound, but the key is being able to switch it. Well, check this out. Awesome. Uh, that sort of hollow, super clean thing is usually only available um, to mere mortals if you get in those in-between, out-of-phase settings. But now you got a, the next level of that. Oh, hello, that's it. That's the sound, right? Everyone that wants an 80s sound, you're like, how oh, do I get that? That's the sound. <clears throat> Or you could just do one, you know? So many options and they all sound good. Now you could take this one step further. You put in the preamp activated. Preamp activated. And now you kind of have like an active system. Check it out how it changes things. It went from that hyper thin to getting a little extra body, preamp out, preamp in. Uh, and then that's variable, so you could add a ton of uh, sauce. Uh, so I guess it is a mid boost because it's just going brrrr. I don't know when you'd ever go full blast on that, but uh, at the lowest position is good 99% of the time you're gonna use that. Maybe a tiny bit more if you need a little extra sauce um, for a part, because it's really easy to get to. If you needed to jump for like a fill break or something like that where they're like, you, take the solo. Now to the bridge. Again, you could split this bridge. So I kind of like the extra bite you get when you split that. Uh, you know, it's like, a, they're colors. So especially when you're tracking, you just get shades of cool all over the place.
oh, we're going through this Mesa quad preamp uh, into the power section of the Friedman. Um, that is in reference to uh, when Dan toured with Giant, he was using a rack system, I believe, that Dave, Dave Friedman it. Uh, that's in reference to when Dan toured with Giant, he was using a rack system that I believe Dave Friedman built, um, that he was running the quad preamp. Uh, traditionally, in pictures and all, all reports say that when Dan was doing his session stuff, uh, it was a Mesa Studio preamp, a Kasha Rock Mod, and a um, Soldano Modified Marshall, and then later he added uh, PV Classic 50s and... Um, 5150 heads and stuff, and probably everything else. I'm sure there's AC30s around and all kinds of other stuff. I did a whole video on it. You could go take a look at that. Something like that ish <laughs> if I get only That's what I was talking about. So that's uh, that's it. I mean, you can spend all day going through tones on this thing. Tyler, Dan Huff model. Oh, um, I had to give it back. <laughs> all right, gang. Thank you for watching. There's a whole bunch of links 